Hey, Mechatronic students, Andrew Dolan, and in this video, we're going to be talking about the four jaw chuck and how to dial in a round part into the four jaw chuck. So let's get started. So, first thing, we've got our four jaw chuck here, and unlike a three jaw chuck where all the, ch all the jaws move uh, together in synchronous, a four jaw chuck, each jaw moves independently. So if we were to take our wrench here, we can see that this wrench, this is only moving a singular jaw. So that makes uh, clamping up a part in a four jaw chuck, especially a round part, a little bit more entertaining. There's the word. So uh, what we have to do is to get our jaw, uh, get our jaws tightened on the part. So we circulate, kind of get all four jaws, get it snug. All right. And then what you're going to find as you rotate the part, that it is horribly out of round. You can see as we rotate this, you can see a bit of movement over there. Okay. <coughs> so we can see that movement even cleaner when we use a dial indicator on it. So what we're going to do is to bring our carriage over and then mount a dial indicator on the carriage as a magnetic base. I guess I can demo this too. This one has a magnetic base. You can see the ones and zeros. So that's turning it on. That's turning it off. You set the magnet in place and then turn it to an on position and it's magnetized and not going anywhere. So with that done, we can grab our dial and try to think of a, the best way to see this on camera. Um, you know, it'd be nice if it was off to the side here and we could see it. So give me a second to get a little bit better fixture just for the camera shot here. Okay, I found a better way to position the dial indicator so that we've got a nice shot of it on the camera here and we can see the needle moving. So as you guys can see, um, we're definitely <laughs> in a bad position. This is uh, rotating all over the place. So on this dial, we've got to find out where the high spots are and kind of treat these as opposing jaws. So we can go about getting two jaws in position first. So this one right now is reading about uh, 55 thousandths. And on the opposite end over here, oh wow, it's way off. So <laughs> not even close. So it definitely looks like um, this jaw is engaged a little bit deeper. So what I'm going to do is to loosen up this jaw and we'll rotate this over and we'll close the opposing jaw and that's going to move our part over so right now this is at 20 thousandths on this side and when I go to the opposite side of it actually that helped quite a bit um, now we're at 40 thousandths okay so when the needle moves toward us okay that means the part is closer so what I would want to do then is tighten this side and loosen the other side. So we typically do those things first. I'm going to loosen this guy up just a little bit, rotate it around, and then tighten the other one. So again, we just kind of treat it as uh, from side to side. So right now this side is at 20 thousandths. And rotate it back. This is at uh, about 40 thousandths. So we didn't really make much progress there. So I'm going to loosen this jaw, bringing it closer, and then tighten the opposing jaw. So if I got it to about 30 thousandths, I'd be doing really well. So right now we're at about 28 thousandths on this end and about 30 thousandths on that end. So we're not bad. So I'm going to spend some time on the other set of opposing jaws now. So this one is reading about five thousandths. And then over here, um, it's way over at 
That's about 55 thousandths. So what needs to happen is this set needs to be tightened to bring this jaw in and the opposite jaw needs to be loosened so we can correct that error. So we're at 50 thousandths. Again, uh, we just take and tighten this up, moving it over. Um, I guess between 5 and 55 would be about 25 thousandths or so. That's not a bad place to be. Okay, so <coughs> just by some rough estimates going back and forth, we've tightened up our jaws. Um, and again, we're just kind of looking at um, this side and this side, treating them individually, then going after the opposite sides, treating them individually. So uh, right now, if I'm worried about this jaw right here is at 20, I'm going to rotate the chuck 180 degrees, and you can see that we're at about 40. So what needs to happen is we need to loosen up this jaw a little bit. So I'm just going to kick it over just a little bit, go to the opposite jaw, and tighten it up. So that's bringing it into about 30 thousandths. So now I'm about um, 30 thou here and pretty darn close to that side as well. Um, this guy's about 30 thousandths. So all in all, right now, we're about two thousandths out of round. So we've kind of dialed this in quite nicely. And again, we just keep going until we got it a I'd say within a hundred thousandths we'd be in great shape. So I'd like to see a little bit better. So this side I'm reading exactly, let me, I can zero this out on this side. That helps too. rotate the dial. That's at zero on this side, 180 degrees opposite of that is at about two thousandths. Okay. So since this is a little bit closer. I'm actually going to go to the one that's the less number. Loosen this up just a hair. Boy, I've got it good and tight. Loosen it up on that side. Rotate 180. Tighten it up over here. And let's see how we're doing. So again, we'll zero out the uh, indicator. Zero on this side. 180 degree turn. And Wow, I think I made it worse. So it's, yeah, we just keep going back and forth, making minor adjustments till we get this in. Okay, five thou, two thou, and we just keep going. Okay, so it's about three thousandths this side. Rotate it over, three thousandths that side. Actually pretty happy with that. We've got it dialed in within one thousandths of an inch all the way around. And now that we've got it where we want it, it doesn't hurt to give each jaw just a little bit more of a tight. Tighten them up. Okay, and you can see the, the total on there. As we rotate the jaw around, we're only moving about, again, put this on zero. Got about maybe one or two thousandths that that needle is moving. So working with the four jaw chuck requires a little bit more messing around to get it set up. But the beautiful part is, we can clamp up work that is not just round, but we can also clamp up square pieces on the lathe. So it has its advantages um, for, for most part. Uh, some people claim that if you can get a four jaw chuck dialed in more precisely than a three jaw chuck, 
but for most of the work uh, I prefer a three jaw check just because it's a little less messing around with the setup. So there you go that is dialing in a part with a four jaw chuck. Catch you guys next time.